Um, okay, so uh, welcome and uh, thank you also for inviting me for tonight um, to talk a little bit about um, REC photography and creative lighting in RECs. And um, yeah, I pr probably some of you already have seen um, some of my of my REC images. Uh, maybe this presentation is about uh, rec photography in general, which also cons consists of um, some uh, creative lighting in recs. But I would, uh, my idea was to talk a little bit more about recs before as well, so to get it more in a specific context. I hope that's okay as well. So to talk a little bit more about recs in general, how to photograph them, and I think that that will also help to. Uh, do more or to, to give you even more, yeah? not only the creative lighting inside, but also um, from the outside and how to to dive on racks and how to to shoot racks actually. Yeah, so um, yeah, I think maybe one of two one or two of you have seen already some of my pictures of racks. I'm not really a big, well, never were, was a big rec fan or especially recs were interesting for me, but um, it seems that I can shoot them pretty good, maybe because of the reason they can't swim away, <laughs> I don't know. Um, they just uh, stand still, yeah, and they will always be there, usually, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so it's a very good opportunity, I think, um, to, to shoot it in a different way or to try something more creative because the conditions will always be the same or almost similar. Uh, especially inside or from, from any perspective. So it's a little bit like um, shooting topside in my eyes, like shooting architecture or shooting some different topside stuff, yeah, where it's not so much about the, it, it is also about the right time to shoot racks. I will come to this as well, but um, it's not so much a priority to, um, to have the right time or the right uh, weather you need to have for a rack, but you can really be creative in any kind of photography and angles inside, outside and back. So this is why I love them so much, just because of the photography you can do um, at or in racks. And um, this is an image uh, from Barbados, uh, from Georgetown. And there is actually the dive site. You can already see it where you can dive in six racks. <laughs> this was the most racks I've ever dived. You can see them here. And they are pretty, are actually all pretty nice. I mean, you can dive them, but not at the same time shoot them or like really photograph them all. But um, I found it very nice and interesting that you can actually dive on six racks and one dive in, in theory. And um, yeah, and they can be shallow, they can be um, very deep, um, basically anything. Yeah. So just as a as a small introduction, that there's such a high diversity um, in general of of racks. But the biggest part, of course is uh, first outside or the outside is always the uh, most iconic way to, to photograph a wreck because um, it's not only about us who, who know wrecks or who know about underwater photography in my eyes um, and know about the diving or like like that wrecks are underwater but also about the viewers that are watching our pictures which are not necessarily always divers or know a lot about wrecks or can consider um, a shot, a wreck shot, because they just don't know what that is underwater. So I found always like the most iconic shot, like the Titanic, is the bow view. Yeah, this is like the shot. This is um, always good and it's always recommended if you have a new wreck uh, or if I'm if I'm diving a new wreck, I always go usually first to the bow to just have a view of the wreck and how how it is uh, built, how it is, is it standing on, on the sand, is it lying, is it uh, in another way, is it um, whatever, is the bow at all there or is it not there, uh, like the new media, the brother edits, for example, you can't see the bow anymore, of course, there's only the, the back uh, of the boat, but it's very deep, so this is a very difficult to photograph wreck, for example, the new media, because it doesn't have these iconic things, uh, only the middle part, for example, but if you don't know how to photograph a wreck, or if you are, uh, if you if you don't know what to do, then the bow shot is always the shot to start and from there to to work on. Um, if you got really big um, wrecks, um, this is not a very big wreck, uh, but maybe all of you know this as well. This is the Janus D in, in Egypt at the Abu Nuhas um, reef, and um, there, for example, this shot is a panoramic shot, which I stitched or merged together in several images, and I will come to this as well, because this is, I think, a very 
a powerful way how to photograph and how to display and how to show racks and which hasn't been done so much in the past and in the several years and I don't know why uh, actually because I consider it, this is really really powerful um, also for reefs also for other stuff but especially I think um, outside and also inside um, of racks. Um, but this shot you probably all know <laughs> that's the, because of um, Alex Mustard and uh, he did this iconic shot I think first with his um, uh, with his magic filters with his uh, with his filters and this is we can really really nicely achieve especially on this rack on the Genesis D a very nice effect with the with the filters or also with a proper white balance and this is also very very um, important to to set a really nice white balance if you get nice light conditions and um, but especially at the Genesis D um, they are usually always very nice light conditions so if you want to try around here with um, with white balances or with magic filters or with any red filter this is the rack um, to test it definitely but um, I said that um, the bow shot is always the best one but also the the um, backside of both the stern view is also very nice as you can see here this is also in uh, Bridgetown in Barbados um, uh, is a nice rack, a nice bow view so sometimes you can really really have uh, nice views of the uh, nice views of the stern as well of the backside of the boat and these are the two very nice photograph views of racks in my eyes because um, they can always identify and clearly see this is a rack and also because usually the boats um, are very uh, um, small in this area so you can actually shoot a whole rack or you can actually get very close and still have and still completely frame the whole rack in one um, capture and one in one image and this is very powerful because as you probably all know um, the less water you get between your camera and the subject the better the quality is and um, if you can get very close like here um, strobes are also very very helpful to just light up a little bit um, of the structures of the of the rack not always um, or usually um, or some <laughs> you can't say usually or some, uh, but sometimes uh, uh, strobes or additional lighting is, is absolutely not necessary if you get a nice atmosphere a nice natural light falling on the on the rack here so you need to really consider I'm, I'm switching I'm switching off my strobes a lot of times when I'm photographing in or outside in racks um, to avoid backscatter of course but also because it's just not needed and you can work with the atmospheric light but here in this case it was really uh, necessary um, to light up a little bit more of the rack so you can see more of the of the written uh, letters for example and so on and so on yeah so it's like it's totally depending on the case <clears throat> but as I said the new media and this is a picture of the new media is one of the racks which is not so easy to photograph but here um, when you say okay there's uh, not so much to photograph maybe the bow or the stern is not so not so nice I would also pick up some interesting things which are in the mid ship so to say or which are which are standing out like this uh, how you call it in, in English, railing, railing, um, this were just standing uh, or like falling a little bit off um, of, the, um, of, the, of the ship and um, what is really important here is that you don't or that I didn't frame the, the, this part of the, of the wreck which is really nicely grown in, in soft corals against the, the boat or against the reef but into the blue so that you can actually um, frame it against the blue and that it has more contrast so that you can directly see okay this is a shipwreck and something nice especially also with a diver uh, behind it so to make some some um, uh, to uh, um, to just make them a measurement of the sizes as well yeah so I always like to have divers with wrecks um, to, to just to compare the sizes I want to say um, between the wreck and uh, a human being well, well uh, basically yeah? so it's always a good idea to have a model or like your buddy your who's also maybe a photographer yeah? so to model it for each other is always um, a good idea I think but also the propellers um, are usually very very nice um, if you don't know what to do or uh, are usually um, nice to, to photograph here is in uh, Gozo the Cabela rack you maybe know this as well um, has very very nice propellers 
and also like a small, um, how do you say it, langust, langust, lang, lang, uh, like uh, this cross and <laughs> you know what I mean, it's also inside the, the, the yeah. presentation, yeah. thank you, um, it's also very tasty actually, yeah, but we didn't taste of that one, <laughs> that particular one, um, no, this is always a good idea to photograph, of course, but what I also love, and this is the, the sizzle gum, one of my favorite, most favorite racks maybe in the world, um, because it has so many possibilities, um, probably also most favorite rack to a lot of divers, um, especially in the Red Sea. But um, the most important thing is, especially if you are photographing um, from the outside, is to wait for good conditions. And this basically goes to, to all the racks, but especially to the Sislogom. So if you dive the Sislogom, and if you have, for example, a plan to go to the cargo deck one, or to the upper cargo deck, to the lower cargo deck, whatever plan you have, and you jump into the, in the water, and you see, oh, we have super good visibility, then I would totally recommend to skip all plans and do outside shots only um, of the Sisogon, because maybe in one of 10 dives, maybe one of, I don't know, seven, eight dives, you have really, really good visibilities when the current is coming from the south and not from the north, um, probably usually in the in the mornings, and there's, um, I think it's very um, convenient or very, um, or it's much more worth it to, to just photograph the, the outside in that moment because you can't get these conditions so often. Yeah? So also changing of plans and be, being flexible, I think, is especially in underwater photography, really a key um, element. Um, but there are all kinds of wrecks, as I said. Um, this is also a wreck, but you can't see the wreck uh, anymore, only the cargo. This is in Italy, in Liguria, in the, in the north of Italy. The Mediterranean Sea, and there's a 2,000 year old uh, Roman wreck with uh, 10,000 uh, amphors still lying in the sand and uh, exactly more or less than exactly 40 meters. Um, you can't dive it always, it's been restricted by the government, um, but I like it very, very much. And here, for example, I also switched off my strobes of my camera and just used um, the light, the video light of my buddy, which I instructed before that he um, is just going to. Um, light the M4s um, with the with his own the with his own light beam, and I think I like this effect much more than when I would have had my strobes on and would have just lightened the 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 whole um, image. And this is basically it's not about under, only about underwater photography, but also about photography in general. Is 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 the light is so important, and that you don't um, um, brighten up. A, um, a picture, but you set light, and this is the important thing, that you can see or that you're going to see the light which is happening at the moment, and then you're reacting to that light and to set up your camera in a way to capture the good light and not to just photograph it. And um, this is a little, for me, at least a key element, but it also comes with, of course, with experience, unfortunately, <laughs> so the more you photograph, the, the better we are, but also um, to watch and to be open and to learn um, a lot about underwater photography. But also plane wrecks, and I think this is one of the most famous um, plane wrecks in the world. It's in Palau. Um, yeah, it's called Jack Sea Plane. It was a former Japanese Zero, and it was um, rebuilt as a water plane, and then it was sunk into 12 meters. Very convenient, very nice. Uh, way how it is, or uh, you can play around with this racks for, for for an hour, I think, and to find different things. But I just wanted to show you a little bit about what priority racks have and what fascination I had of racks. If you go deeper into into that topic and what you can all do uh, with all racks in the world, um, this is a rack in Norway, uh, very not so deep, maybe 20, 30 meters, but of course you probably know this as well that um, the more north you go, and especially in, in, in Norway, in the fjords, you have a lot of sediment, a lot of um, uh, particles in the water, and it gets very um, very dark very, very quickly. But I wanted to explain with this example, actually, that um, I didn't plan any shot of this wreck. It was the first time I was uh, photographing this, but it's always good to react as well to what your buddies or your your divers are doing. So um, this wasn't my buddy, but just another diver who was just there and he was playing around with his lights and his camera in this place. And I was just waiting for this. I took a shot before and I said, okay, this is nice, but I saw him coming from the back 
And I thought, oh, maybe I get a nice light situation with his lights as well. Yeah. So I was just waiting until um, and very stable until he was um, there in the right position. Then I pressed the trigger. So this is also about reacting to a specific situation um, underwater. And I think what makes them really um, you, what can make a good image to a much better image in, in, in the end. Um, what I also like very much if you can combine techniques, that means rack photography with uh, split shots, for example. This is also the um, Fusula Cow in um, Abu Dhabi. Maybe my second <laughs> favorite rack in the Red Sea, uh, which has also so much possibilities to, to shoot and um, I'm still uh, not through with it yet, even if I have like, I don't know, dozens of dives um, there, this rack, but it doesn't get tiring or it, it doesn't, it, it, it's not tiring for me, this, this rack as well as the silver gum. There are always new possibilities, always new things and the possibilities are so big. But in a specific time of the day, you can actually shoot a very nice split shot of the bow because it's only like, um, I think, two or three meters when it starts um, in this area. Where the work starts and very very nice and a very nice um, opportunity to take a split shot of a of a wreck as well. Well, here for example, it's in um, in in Elba, a very nice wreck in the Mediterranean Sea or a very nice island in the Mediterranean Sea, and there's one wreck which is also where the maximum depth is uh, 12 meters as well. And with all these shallow wrecks, you can it's definitely an opportunity to try a nice uh, split shot of a wreck. And if it's not working out in horizontal mode, then vertical is always a good and nice possibility. I wish I had a diver here as well <laughs> that could uh, measure a little bit the, or like uh, have, I have measurements of the comp uh, uh, um, comparison between the sizes here, but uh, you, don't, you don't always get the perfect um, conditions, of course. But as I said, also panoramics are a very powerful tool. And um, I think this image has, Two years ago in UPY also was, I think, second or third, I don't know. Um, but um, it's also a panoramic image, of course, of the Chrysula car. And usually I, I was I was never able to get this um, um, cargo area with the, all these tiles um, at the at the bow very good or to capture a really good shot um, about it until I had the idea to make a panoramic shot um, from it. And then I think you can really get so much more on the picture. It's basically an upgraded fisheye, the panoramic, and then I think it's very powerful to do this. And it's so easy to do, to do this actually in, um, in Lightroom. Yes, I was just about uh, going to say how many shots that are. <laughs> uh, it, I think it was like six, seven or eight shots um, I took. I don't really think about how many shots that are. I'm just starting little bit um, in front of course to give it some space to the to the front and also from to the back and then I'm just trying to not um, to overlap the images by 50% or one third and I, I would also recommend to do a few panoramic shots not only one but to do it maybe two three or four times from maybe different perspectives because sometimes Lightroom is not able to merge the images because you're very unstable in the water, you're maybe one meter higher or more, maybe one meter more right. And usually um, panoramic images or also 360 degree images uh, can't be taken without a tripod, usually. And usually you also would need a so-called Nodel adapter, if that's right, <laughs> if my English is right. And this is actually not, you don't put the camera on the tripod and you just turn it. You actually have to turn your camera and uh, around the point which is between the lens and the ending of the lens and the sensor it's like a cross point between the between the um uh, between the lens and the and the sensor and it's like in the middle of the roughly about or approximately in the middle of the of the lens and there at this point you'd actually turn the camera around and then you got a perfect shot um a perfect, or then you can actually stitch together uh, a really nice 360 panoramic image, for example, or like another panoramic image. image. Um, I think eight or nine years ago, I did some 360 degree um, images. You can, you, st you can still see them on my on my website, which are very powerful in my eyes, but I've never done them until now. But they have been done with a nodal point adapter and I was using a tripod. But nowadays, because I don't always want to take a tripod with me and because Lightroom is so powerful in merging the images together that I just use it uh, uh, with my hand or like I just like trying um, 
rolling the camera vertical, also usually with uh, shut off strokes, but it depends on the situation. And then I'm just like trying to turn um, the camera and being as stable as possible um, in the water column um, to not uh, to be able that Lightroom is, or that Lightroom is afterwards be, uh, being able to stitch and to match the, the um, panoramic images together. But sometimes it just doesn't work. Um, maybe you have the wrong position or maybe it's too um to from the angle to to um too difficult for lightroom actually to to put it together but i would definitely uh, try it out um if i would be you and um, because it just gives you another perspective of rex in my eyes um this is also a shot from the um Cuse la car um, but it's more from the more from the stern, more on the back of the of the boat, which I did only um, last year uh, or one year ago approximately. And there I put a remote stroke, or actually two remote stroke in this cargo deck to also illuminate a little bit more the inside of the cargo there, uh, which also has a very nice very nice effect in my eyes. But I also of course I removed the cable um, from my from my camera. I usually have a 10 meter S6 cable with me. Um, attached to my camera and attached to one straw um, because especially in daylight it's very difficult to trigger the um, slate strop sensors because it's, of course it's very very light or very bright and then the slate sensor not always fires and this is always a problem so I usually I rather have uh, the 10 meter cable with me which I can do a lot of more things and where I know that the strobe is definitely firing and I don't need to to, to check it or I need to double check it, or maybe to realign the slave sensor or whatever. So this is, I think, a very, very nice uh, method um, to definitely trigger your straw. So inside, <laughs> we're coming closer inside uh, in, into the racks. Um, I think um, racks have so much possibilities, <laughs> like also with animals, and if you have the luck that you have some wildlife inside the rack, I would definitely also go for it. And here in this situation, I was actually waiting for another photographer, not the one who's on the, on the picture, until it's not on the Kriesel car. Sorry that there are so many Kriesel car pictures in the presentation, but as you can see, or as I said, it's my, one of my favorite racks. And maybe you can see or, or feel a little bit my passion about this rack as well when you see the pictures. But um, in this case, um, I was just waiting in the door in that working room where this um, where this uh, screw machine is, that thing, and uh, for the other photographer to shoot that one actually, and it was sitting in the or waiting into the door frame when that Mora eel came from the back and just like passing my head for a few centimeters like away and then swimming into that cargo area and was a little bit surprised of course in the in the first moment and was trying to signal to the other photographer please photograph the more you know, it's in a perfect position but he was just like i don't know yeah surprised as well he was not reacting at all so i took the and said okay well if he doesn't want to photograph then i'm doing it and i quickly swam off behind the uh, more eel or after the more eel and uh, luckily it turned a little bit there and the other photographer also was waiting in the uh, in the cargo deck or in the exit to the, to the cargo deck and I just had a, had a lucky shot actually. Um, but for this shot um, I was intentionally using only one strobe uh, for this. I had two strobes on my camera at this moment and I also had a fisheye on and usually that combination doesn't light up the whole image. As you can also see that there's a little shadow on the left side and also a little shadow on the right side and that there's a small vignette uh, for the whole picture, but I had it pretty much in the in the center of the of the image or in the center of the camera uh, in front uh, on top of the camera, and could photograph just what I need. And you don't always need to photograph everything in an image, especially not inside um, racks. I think yeah. So you only need to photograph what is really important in the picture, and everything what was important in the picture has been lightened has been light by the uh, strobe and this is all what I need and actually the vignette helps in my eyes to even get the focus more onto what's really happening in the picture. Now you can say okay you can also do this in, in Lightroom afterwards with the effects and to do like a um, artificial vignette but I also like to shoot it in a way that you don't have to make so much Lightroom adjustments or not so many post-production adjustments. I really love the effect of this image and I love also that it has been done there and that it has 
um, almost nothing in this image has been post-produced. So the original, the raw, is almost the same. Um, I did not uh, do any big um, changes because I it was just okay like it is. And um, I think this um, is very nice in photography. If you just see the result immediately on your camera and see, okay, nice, this was a good image. Um, but also, rich views are super important in my eyes. Yeah, usually, or uh, sometimes, unfortunately, you don't have many instruments anymore on the bridge or anything is stolen. But here, this is a wreck in uh, Cyprus. The um, Tenobia, also <laughs> a very, very nice wreck, actually, which I really, really like to dive more in the in the future because it has so many things still inside because it was uh, there was nobody um, harmed in the when it was um, when it sank sank um, uh, uh, 30 years ago but um, uh, it has so many things still inside all the um, cables all the things yeah so from a real I mean to to, to see the things and the details in a wreck is I think one of uh, the most important things or the most enjoyable things when diving wrecks and they are also very nice racks made for divers, um, but they are unfortunately totally stripped, and there's nothing in it which is no no details, no 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 soul, so to say. Yeah, I mean uh, in in these racks, so I would rather dive a wreck which is which was sunk in in, in brackets naturally, yeah, and not um, artificially, but um, of course um, with the respect of the that there has been hopefully nobody harmed. Um, but what, what, what I also like is that not always a diver is uh, inside an image or inside a wreck image, but also that um, sometimes images can speak for itself. For example, like here, that's the Umbria in, in Sudan uh, or near Port Sudan, also a very famous wreck, also actually very similar to the Sisselgorm, but it has not been, uh, it, was, it didn't sank within a um, fight. Um, but the crew actually sank it um, by themselves because they didn't want to get the. Um, I think there was just the change um, in Sudan uh, where the British came in, I think, in that moment. And then um, the crew was from Italy and they sank the, um, the ship so that the, um, the British army couldn't get the munition inside. And this is actually the main attraction, of course, of the of the Umbria is the amounts of bombs and ammunition that is still inside the cargo decks. It's enormous, and I had the chance to dive this wreck um, a lot of times because I was uh, stuck in Sudan when the Corona pandemic actually started, and uh, we were there instead of one week, we were there for three and a half weeks, and we were stuck near to Port Sudan and uh, could at least dive the wreck uh, in the mornings and a little bit more than, than usual. So I can definitely recommend this wreck. It's really, really nice and super interesting. And even though I have done now a lot of dives there, um, there are still so many possibilities um, of it. Yeah, that looks uh, kind of dangerous Yeah, for me too. And I'm not too optimistic <laughs> to touch all of these things, yeah. <laughs> but um, I mean, there were so many divers already inside the the, the Umbria. I think that you can say that it's it, at least statistically it's it's safe, I guess. <laughs> um, but the next image is also an example of uh, what I mean with uh, shutting off the strobes and reading a little bit of light. This is also the Cadela in Gozo. Uh, with I think the, one of the most famous stair, uh, stairs in, inside the wreck, which is very powerful. This is actually a strip wreck, but this actually got a little bit more of soul, so to say, uh, in my eyes, or some atmosphere. And I like it on this image that you can't actually tell if it's really been done underwater or not, or if it may be topside. So um, also intentionally without a diver, so it doesn't always need to have a diver, just the atmosphere is sometimes sometimes enough and just shut off the strokes and to use the to see the light what you what, what is what is there and not too much um, artificial light and um, this is also the Sithagon but it's not a very nice image um, but this is maybe the first image I took or one of my first dives at the Sithagon 
And I took that image um, and I kind of liked it in these in these years, but um, I was watching this image over and over when it was back home in the few years and I was like, okay, this is not actually what I really wanted to, to, to do. Yeah? So you can see that I already placed the light in the left side of the truck that was a remote stroke. And um, I also had another remote stroke in the other side of the truck, but this didn't, uh, this wasn't triggered in this uh, picture. So I was already a little bit disappointed that not all strokes for this image have been, um, have been triggered. So uh, my plan was, okay, the next time when I'm going to the Sithogom, I definitely want to try a panoramic image of that cargo deck because only then I think that it's really suitable for that cargo deck and the whole whites of that cargo deck to, to do it. So the next time I came, I did this um, panoramic shot, which fortunately, um, fortunately won 2018 than the UPY. But um, thanks to Kirsty, who is also on the call, uh, and is also the picture here in the back side of the truck. Um, I was asking her if she can help me with this image and to be my model. Um, at least um, you can't see her, unfortunately, so much in this image. So I would do another time, maybe better or, or more. And um, yeah, it's, um, but this is, I think, really, really gives the, the, the cargo deck another dimension and really deserves the, the, the car for the cargo deck, I think, or really um, um, is a better image of the, of the whole cargo deck. Yeah, so to just have more, more uh, of this image. And it was actually quite, um, or not so excellent modeling, yes, of course. Yeah, without my model, this picture would only be half that good, I have to say, yeah. <laughs> Um, and um, there's only the, there's a question from Justin how many remotes are there? There are actually no remote strobes here. There are only two lights inside there. Um, there's one Caldan light or one video light in the left truck and one in the right truck. Um, and then that's it. And then there's only the light of uh, Kirsty. And I had the strobes a little bit on on my on my camera when I took the panoramic shot to just light up the front a little bit more and to be able to see the the motorbikes and uh, but the problem was that there's the actually the wall the of the of the boat was just there where where the panoramic has been taken so i had actually to shoot first into one direction then switch my position to the other side and then shoot in the other direction which was not so when with the camera um tight uh, very tight uh, uh, to the or not tight uh, but very close to the um to the wall actually yeah so as close as possible so that i can get the um the panoramic as wide as uh, possible of course um perspectives it's also very very important in my eyes um of uh, of racks and you can get so many different uh rack perspective this is also the umbria and um, this is actually a very diagonal image. Yeah? It's not the, how, the, how the Umbria is actually in the water. It's uh, almost uh, on the side, um, the, the bow of the, of the Umbria. It's almost uh, 90 degrees, but I wanted to shoot it as if I would be there or standing above here. Yeah? So you can see the surface actually on the left and you can see how it's really lying in the water, but to then um, I wanted to have that diagonal, yeah? if you can see that with that little tip of the bow which is standing out and also with the anchor line uh, and also with another diver who's just diving there and I didn't tell her to dive there, I was just trying, telling her like just go down there and do whatever you want and uh, I was just photographing or trying to capture the moment to be as, as natural as possible. So not always with a lamp, not always with a torch, or the, I always like the diversity of, of divers within the um, images, especially on the, on the works. But also different perspectives, like here, this is also a stern view also of one of the racks in Barbados, uh, which I like, is, uh, which I find is very nice because it's a fish trawler and it has this little overhang on the, on the stern a little bit more. And I was seeing this and I was trying to capture this because it gives you just a little bit more of atmosphere um, of, that, of that rack. So all the different views and perspectives and to change perspectives and to be maybe also radical in, in perspectives where where it's completely different to, to, to something else and to try it out because actually you have nothing to lose. Um, it's the worst case what can happen 
is that you're not going to choose the image yeah or that it's a bad image or then you can just not show it <laughs> so this is the only thing you can actually lose with it yeah so you're not in the pressure to deliver really nice images but you can win a lot if you try out different things in my eyes also this one this was uh, also from this year in the bahamas uh, it's not really fully post-produced as there are some you know, for me too much uh, bubbles inside and too much uh, backscatter maybe i would clean this up but i gave it also in the post-production a very dark touch because i was photographing all the lines that were actually in front of the bow, uh, uh, bow of that um, of that um, uh, rack um, and i liked the perspective very much because it was a little bit um, not really with all the lines not really clean and whatever but as i especially like this effect so i changed a little bit of perspective and gave it a little bit more room um, to the bottom or to the front um, to also show all the lines which are and made a very very dark post-production of it very high contrast and I think it's also has a kind of nice um, atmosphere actually but also shooting from from upside down can have a really really nice effect again this is the jealousy in, in Abu Nohas and this is actually basically during the safety stop or during when I was already at the um, at the zodiac to be picked up and I was having a last look down it was like so nice to see all these light beams and all these light rays coming down to the wreck and it was really nice that it going it was really surrounded by these these rays and then to just take the opportunity and to shoot what you what you see and with just with natural light is um, are sometimes um, the most uh, or the best shots uh, in my eyes. And this wreck is also from the Bahamas. And I've never seen that before, and uh, or sh any shots of that wreck. This was completely new to me, and we only dived this wreck because we had so bad conditions at uh, Tiger Beach and Bimini that we had to go and to hide in Nassau to to do some wreck dives. <laughs> and uh, of of course, it was originally a um <laughs> a, a shark. Uh, trip, so it ended up to be a wreck trip, uh, or like kind of a little bit, but it gave me a really, really nice opportunity here um, to dive at this wreck, uh, which we just dived by chance, really, and nobody really knew. But this overhang of this wreck was really impressive, and it was actually very horizontal the whole wreck. But I put my camera into a diagonal to make the image even more stronger. To put, I think putting in di diagonals into images is very strong and helps really also in the perspectives, um, especially in racks to, to shoot it or just in general in photography. But this really helps and this also displays here the this overhang very nicely. Yeah? So um, I think you it's always good to think about what um, is the key element of the rack or what is that what makes this rack and then to shoot especially this is this um like photographing somebody maybe in his good position like to do a portrait of somebody and if bad example if that person has a big nose you do, wouldn't photograph maybe the profile of that person because it doesn't look so nice yeah so you photograph him or her from the front and then it looks much nicer and to make like to find out what are the specialties of that Rack, how does it look best or of that animal and then to shoot it in that in that uh, direction in that dimension but also i like it if um if you don't shoot if you have a rack but you don't shoot the rack or that the rack is actually the background um here's also the sisagon this is the anchor of the sisagon also without strokes just with natural light and was just shooting the anchor of the sisagon with the sisagon behind it um and this is a very nice way also to shoot racks in my eyes to photograph something which is maybe lying on the ground anchors of in my eyes very very um a very good very good subject or very good example of this but also something else yeah which is there maybe a wheel maybe a propeller maybe something else and to put the rack in the background yeah so to have foreground and background of an image is very important in photography and you can also do this um underwater very easily um, but also here, this is uh, also in Norway, a minesweeper, and um, to shoot uh, like two sides of a rack is also very nice. This is also the bow view, and as I said, bow views are very nice. Also, diagonals are very nice. I did that with, uh, I did both of this, and, but um, you can shoot that in, in any uh, kinds of uh, waters. In my eyes. Um, this is also the same rack from the Bahamas, which I showed before, but from maybe five meters or from the from the safety stop. And this is also a panoramic shot. 
Um, so it, uh, I also took maybe seven or eight images, and you can all, this is almost 180 degrees because you can see in the um, top part you can see the surface, and in the bottom part of the image you can almost already uh, see the surface as well. At least you can also see already see the sun rays coming down. So um, this is almost 180 degrees, but also a nice perspective in my eyes. And without the panoramic method, I would say, um, I couldn't have uh, pictured or framed that wreck in this way. Um, so I think it's always nice to see if you can say, oh, this could be a very, very nice view, but I don't get it completely on my fisheye. So then do a panoramic image uh, or do a panoramic. That's just uh, very nice. Planning is also uh, sometimes can be very big on, on racks. For example, here also in the Genesis D, um, it has a very, very nice corridor at the side where um, at a specific time of the year and a specific date time of the day, um, you can see these light beams going into the um, into the into this corridor. And you need to know to in which time you need to do this and in which time of the year you need you can do this, otherwise you won't see these light beams and if you want to shoot or if you just in a, as an example you would really 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 like to shoot that particular part of the rack or this particular image um, it's always good to inform yourself upfront um, when this is when when this is possible and also to um, if you maybe have been already to Rex um, or to travel to Rex already, or if you're new to Rex, search on Instagram or on in on the internet uh, for images of that rack to be prepared. And if you see, oh, this is a very nice image of this and this corridor, or especially on the next image, Ellie's bike. If you want to really photograph Ellie's bike in the Sisselgorm, yeah, then you need to know where it is or what you want to photograph. And not always. Um, the dive guides know which bike you mean because they are not photographers. Um, so it's really important that you show them before a picture of, <coughs> excuse me, of uh, what you want to photograph, and then they know what uh, what you want to see because for them this is only the one. There are 67 other motorbikes, and they don't know which bike you mean. But if you and, and also if you say, oh, any bike or the bike that Alex Master photographed so much, or that bike where everybody put this light behind this, the, 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 the wheels, then usually the guides are just like, well, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> and so, but if you can show them a picture of that, of that bike or that part of, your, of the wreck you want to shoot, then it's much easier. So just be prepared um, and plan your shots. And um, you can also check, it's always a good idea, it gives you good ideas about the wreck and what you can do and what you not do. This is not about, also not about copying other images, other people's images, but also to get an inspiration on what they did, maybe on this bike, and maybe I do this on another bike as well. Or maybe I, um, Alex or Toby has an, had, had a nice idea to put a um, light in a specific um, truck, and maybe I want to try this on another uh, truck, and so on and so on. Yeah, So it's always good um, to be prepared, and also to have um, uh, to know the rack and to know the locations is very good. Um, it's very good. This is um, the Rosalie Müller, for example, which I don't like too much. Actually, it has very nice inside as well, but it is so much of sediment, and because there are not so many divers there usually, or not that, not as the Sisselgorm, I would say, um, that it's usually um, uh, you have a lot of sediment in the in the um, in, inside the rack, so it's not so easy to photograph it, and very deep as well. But um, if you have as much dives and as much location scouting before, um, the better the images will be as well. So um, the better you know the wreck, of course, um, the better um, you can you know what you want to photograph. Finally, creative lighting. <laughs> um, so I think you've already got a pretty good idea about what to photograph in wrecks, but um, for what is one of what or what is one of my most Fun things to do is really um, to take as many torches and, and strobes and lamps inside a rack and um, to play around with them. Yeah, and there's it opens up for me a, a complete new chapter in in racks to to have light to, to have uh, some lights with you and also to shut off your strobes of your camera or also very carefully and sensitively set them up 
and to just work with um, with light what you have um, on on your video lights. And I like the video lights a lot because you can already see and feel how the light is going to affect your image uh, very good. But um, the Video lights are usually not as powerful as strobes, so you need to be very careful in terms of light from the outside. So you can um, not, or sometimes not compensate the because outside is just too bright, so that you don't see the light from the from from the inside. If you want to um, set up your camera on <laughs> on on um, on the outside blue, for example, if you want to get a nice blue from the from the outside still, then you just wouldn't wouldn't see the the amount of light coming from a video light but if you are going to set up your camera to the light of the inside video light then the outside is uh, the light what comes from the outside is totally overexposed i hope that makes um sense uh what i'm what i'm saying yeah <laughs> and alexia has said six gallons and two cans of sprites <laughs> yeah you mean my my strobes or what <laughs> yeah this is my very nice uh, camouflage uh, camouflage strobes, so you don't see them in the construction. <laughs> um, and these are actually the um, I have here four Caldans, and these are the two twenty two thousand uh, and twenty five thousand lumen Caldans actually, um, super cheap as well. Yeah. <laughs> but I only borrowed them as well for for Caldan for some project, but they have really really nice light. I have to say, very powerful. They are almost as good as a strobe, but not as much really. Um, the next image is also from the um, Chrysler car, again from the machine room of the Chrysler car, from the uh, stern side, no, yeah, from the, this is the left side, yeah, so you know what, no, not from the stern side, from the, you know what I mean, from the left side of the boat, um, and it's very, very nice, and this, um, I think also, I think won the work category last year in UPY, um, but um, there I used also six lights and put them behind the engines, to just have a nice atmospheric effect, and I was also um, able to um, get some nice blue light coming from the from the from the top or from the outside, which I really really like the effect between the different um, lights, the artificial lights coming from the video lights, and also the effect of the the uh, natural light coming from 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 outside to give that machine room really a nice atmosphere as well as combined uh, with the panoramic image. So this was a kind of a very similar technique which I did in um, in the Sysagorm, also uh, put the camera on the wall and changed my position uh, when, when I was shooting in different directions and putting together this panoramic, but this is so powerful and I still um, need a shot from the other room actually, <laughs> from the opposite room, which is even more difficult to photograph and to put in the light, but the it's very difficult or very sensitive to put the lights in the right spot actually in the rack so that they are lighting up the wall behind them or to give some nice atmosphere but not um, um, having a too much a strong beam towards the camera so you can see on the right side i intentionally put a light um, pretty much against the camera and to the direction of the camera so that they that creates some nice beams behind that um, generator thing or whatever that was. Um, but the rest of the lights I put uh, between the engines or between the generators um, to not show any, the actual light beam. And this is a difficult thing to put the um, to put the lights in such a way that they are illuminating um, the right amount of rack, but not are but but are not too um powerful um in a way to overexpose the camera or too powerful in in the image yeah? so this i think a nice balance of of atmosphere of that uh, machine room and um, but you can basically do this in almost all racks these are the three cars the three citrons uh, which are in the umbria in sudan um, also very nice so you can put one small light there one small light there one small light there and you also don't need so much need to mind about the different color temperatures if you only have different uh, lamps or torches as long as, as it is a white beam and not a spot beam of the of the torch of the light what you have you can basically use everything what you what you have and if you don't like the light tone you can actually change it very easily in um in lightroom with a radial filter afterwards yeah? so um you can just choose the white balance a little bit more to warm a little bit more to cold like whatever you want um so this is very easy if you don't have all um uh, 
lights in the same color temperature, then this is a nice help, I think, um, to even get it. But I would definitely, if you if you like these images or if you want to do more of this as well, just take all the lights you have with you. Um, I, and I believe that you don't have, uh, it, that, that there's always light missing or there's always a light which you still can place somewhere. <laughs> Um, this is also a very nice shot of my eyes. It was not my idea. It was also Alex Mustard's idea, but I also liked to this this effect too much, so I had to copy it as well. This is actually a strobe uh, from the left side, and in this case, there was just too much, um, or the the outside was just too bright. So um, I think here a strobe was really the best alternative to um, actually be able to. Um, be at the same level at the like the outside or to match the uh, the brightness of the outside um, with this job. So I also had a remote cable going into that main door on the left side and then placed the strobe on the left side and just illuminated the the inside of that um, little kitchen also in the Kisula car in, in Avenue Has. And I really really love the idea because all these structures are so unstable. There are so many holes inside that you can actually see through the holes and still have that high contrast of that. And it's really a nice frame with all the blacks outside. And um, I also, um, you know, it was super necessary to not shoot or not to illuminate too much from the front strobes and to shut them off and to just let the light of that one remote strobe uh, on the left do all the work. Um, this is also Ellie Spike, the one famous spike, and I wanted to uh, put it a little bit further um, and put some more light at the bikes behind that, at the left truck inside the um, engine area where the, where, where the engine was, and also um, in the backside um, of that little cargo area here. And also in the next room, I had a light, uh, which I, I think you can always bring it a little bit further. And, and, and what I want to say is you can experiment so much with this, with this light and do so much new perspectives that it's really worth to, to just experiment uh, with, uh, with video lights and to do a little bit more about creative photography inside um, of Rex. And it's so, so nice to, um, to do things with it or with, uh, with this technique. And I would still, I would also say that uh, video lights are much nicer to, um, um, to experiment with this technique because you can really, really nicely see how the effect of the beams are, especially on the on the uh, wheels of the motorbikes. And you can really see if you put the light behind it, that um, that the light beams are actually in the correct way. And if you um, use a strobe for this, then you only see it actually on your image, uh, on, on the back of the screen of your camera, but not in real life. And the video lights are really nice for this because you can put them down swim in a position where you want to take the photo from, and you can already see it if, if it's going to work out or not. And if it's not going to work out, you just swim again um, towards the, the lights and place them in another way. And you do it so often until you, want, uh, until you see the result you want to see. So this is much, much easier. But, uh, strobes are much more powerful, of course, but much easier to see the light which is coming from the, um, from the video lights. And direction of light is also super, super important, um, of course, that you don't place lights anywhere, but to place it in the right way so that they illuminate exactly what they want or what they should illuminate and not uh, be an interference to, uh, to the picture or are a, a mistake in the picture or like kind of uh, not there because they are, um, because they are there, but um, to, that they have a good effect and not a negative effect, I wanted to say. And here's a little bit um, of a making of, um, of uh, it's not, this was a little bit, um, this is not a real making of, it was a little bit uh, made for this to show it because we wanted to have the bike um, as well inside. But um, Gorilla Pots are actually a very, very nice way to place and to uh, make the right direction of the, of the light. So I have several Gorilla Pots um, with a bell adapter and with a clamp. Uh, on my torches and, and lights and video lights um, to really be able to, to place them because it's also not so sometimes a little bit difficult um, to place them in racks in the correct way and also to not destroy anything. So um, I think gorilla pots are very nice and sensitive also to, to racks here. Um, There's also another example uh, very similar here, especially in the, in the jealousy 
But um, what is also nice um, to see, oh, there's a mistake, this is a German word, <laughs> that um, uh, you don't always, if you want to, to shoot with your strobes um, as well, then uh, it's always nice to not maybe illuminate the whole thing. Um, and here, these are the C-CAM strobes, the one, uh, C-Flash 150D, and they have a macro ring, so to say. This is actually a limiter of the angle what the strobe can shoot. Um, and usually in Brex or sometimes also in, in regular wide angle photography, I like to put the macro uh, rings on to just limit the range of the strobes intentionally because I don't always want to light everything, but I want to play a little bit with the light and with the exact amount of light I want to have to the point, uh, what I want to photograph and what I want to illuminate and maybe what not. Um, so this is maybe also a good idea about um, direction of light and amount of light and also the amount of light which what comes from your from your strokes yeah 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 and it's yeah the yes the exactly yeah the gorilla pods also help very much to not lose the lights especially in the sizzle bomb i was in fear to between the you know, very tiny holes between sometimes the the trucks and if a light falls down there you never get it out actually yeah so <laughs> you can also save a little bit the light there, uh, it's very nice. And here you can see on one of my workshops, I um, made a little time lapse with a GoPro. I hope you can see it in a good way, um, where three of my photographers did a nice teamwork because um, I usually I, I borrow my lights out during the workshops and gave uh, um, the, the three of them, for example, each two lights, but which wasn't enough for everybody of them because they all of them wanted to do more with more lights so i said to them, just team up and use all of your six lights together and then you have more lights and this um, was the result of it and i liked it a lot actually yeah? that they did a similar shot like i showed you before with the motorbike with any bike any spike and a little bit more space so they were always shooting from the same perspective and they were like um uh, doing it by like like round by round yeah each by uh, like like by change of yeah one time the one photographer then the other photographer is um, is on the way so it was really really nice um, teamwork um, of these um, of these three um, people okay um this is basically it um, I have some more in this presentation but I think I said the most and most interesting parts. Um, of it and it's already I think almost one hour which I talked and um, I think this was a nice start into maybe rec photography and for the future so if you want to see more and more um, of my work you can uh, you're more than welcome to follow me um, on my social media channels and um, also go on to my website which is brand new since two weeks or so uh, with a lot of more um, galleries and things and stuff um, I also wrote a book um, about underwater photography. It's also available in English. Um, so this is not the cover for the English version, but there's also actually an English book. And they're also doing a calendar every year um, for uh, with, with uh, some of the best shops, which is also available already in the shop. And I also have some presets for Lightroom. Um, I don't know if you know these, but these are like um, yeah, presets which you can install into Lightroom, which will help you to edit your images um, very nice and very quick. So um, you can also buy them online in my shop if you want to try that out and read a little bit more. I have also some tutorials about the racks and how, about the presets. <laughs> Too much rack talking about the presets. I have some video tutorials also on my, on my website. So you're welcome to see these as well if you want to. And if you're, you maybe have seen some of my uh, green images as well, maybe, and they are available for a limited uh, fine art series. Uh, and it's really limited, <laughs> I promise. And uh, if you're interested in this, just send me an email or follow me on any social media. That will help. So I hope it was interesting for you. I hope I didn't talk too much or too fast or whatever. And I hope um, I gave you a little bit of inspiration for your next um, rec dives.